butcher, baker and greengrocer. Traditional shops once part of every British high street after the Second World War. In fact, the High Street is the UK's most common street name. There are more than 5,000 of them even today. They developed at the turn of the 20th century as the town's answer to the marketplace. Market stalls gave way to fixed shops offering personal service, convenience and even home delivery. In the 1950s, these were the places where locals would go to buy food and homeware. But since then, the British High Street has experienced enormous change. The changes since the 1950s on the High Street have been significant from uh, the old days where you had very much sort of uh, the, the grocer, the butcher, the candlestick maker and then department stores were the key focus for many town centres. We then evolved to the growth of chain retailers and particularly the supermarkets and their expansion but particularly out of town. Uh, they took a lot of people away from the high street and we also built a lot of houses um, out of town as well so that created a change and then more latterly we've seen the arrival of the internet and how that plays and the fact that people can now shop anywhere on any channel that they choose to do so now whilst that's happened we've seen vacancy rates increase significantly and that's led for the structural changes that we see today the rise of pawnbrokers check cashing bookmakers, health and beauty, because they've been able to afford to come onto the high street. But it does mean that the high street is less of a shopping location and more of a destination for experiences, well-being and of course food and beverage. The biggest change over the last two decades has been in the type of shops springing up on the high street. Cafes, sandwich bars, hairdressers, opticians, gyms and of course estate agents. And the rise of the internet has meant that people don't even need to leave home to go shopping. Consumers have never had it so good. There's plenty of choice and cutthroat competition has kept prices in check. But that has spelt difficulty for some domestic clothes retailers, who also face foreign competitors like Spain's Zara, Sweden's H&M and Mango, another Spanish company. This is the High Street in London's West Ealing District. Behind me is Britain's latest retail casualty, BHS, which as you can see is having a closing down sale. The former British Home Stores, a chain of 164 shops founded in 1928 and once a stalwart of the UK High Street, was sold last year for one pound by Sir Philip Green, owner of Topshop, it collapsed recently after administrators failed to find a buyer, putting 11,000 jobs at risk. And Austin Reed, the venerable menswear brand that has dressed people as diverse as the Beatles and Winston Churchill, said it would have to shut its 120 shops by the end of June. There will always be demand for retail space in primary areas, in areas that um, local communities want to come into. So that vibrancy will be there. The, the question really is in more deprived areas where the economics, the costs of operating a, 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 a store will become that more difficult and whether or not they are able to go through that reinvention process to the same extent. And that comes back to you know, the policies, the cost base, business rates, doing something about stopping the disincentives for people operating in, in that space. So that's where the concern is. The collapse of BHS is the UK's largest retail failure since Woolworths in 2008. There have been others too, Alders, department stores, and in other industries, HMV and Our Price. The British High Street has seen dramatic change over the decades, particularly in recent years, as more people choose to shop online. And there'll be more change to come. What was once a place simply to buy things will increasingly become a place to socialise and relax. Shahrazad Dineshku, Financial Times, London.